How have you not come out as the most bitter, dreadful person? I didn't want anyone to steal my kindness. It's what's making me uniquely who I am. It's ironic that we're here talking about the death penalty in California and how it's leading to a question about the death penalty being used. I actually met Governor Gavin Newsom just before he took office in 2018. California's governor. Yes, I was coming through Burbank's air airport having just done the Joe Rogan podcast and he recognized me. And we were on the same flight together back to Oakland and as I went up to him with pleasantries, he thought, I stopped him cold. I said to him, do me a favor, please accept this as gracefully as you can, Governor Newsom, but don't let this job turn you into a liar. And he was taken aback that I seemingly was attacking him. And I said, please understand, I'm not attacking you, but there are 800 men on death row. And if I gave you the right to kill one a month, it would take you 40 years to accomplish that. And if you go along with the death penalty, no law enforcement, no victim will respect you. And more importantly, I myself spent over 400 months praying for victims' justice. I said, the only reason you have the death penalty is because your predecessor, Arnold Schwarzenegger, built the death chamber using inmate labor. You remember him from like Red Sonja and Terminator the idiot that he was, the actor, wanted to be governor and then president, hopefully. So he put to death Tukey Williams in California's death row. And I think that was the defining point because then it turned into misery. The men on death row in San Quentin right now have to be fed behind a rolling shield because they're throwing feces at the guards. One of my best friends, Sean, right now works in San Quentin and he's on my Instagram and I met him and I've been friends with him for now five years. And this man goes into this world dealing with death row prisoners and then turns to me to help him manage the toxic feelings he has for these men. Now, well, well, America is a bit of a, an exception. There's no European country other than Belarus that has the, the death penalty. Why do you think the United States still grips capital punishment? You have to, as an outsider, it, it seems perplexing, but you have to understand the judicial system is a springboard towards politics. If you're a hard on crime prosecutor, you get to be governor, you get to be whatever, but you have to put people to death. You have to get good accomplishments. And if you saw the movie um, Law Abiding Citizen, you saw that the prosecutor's demeanor was, I have a 100% or a 96% conviction rate. You see, at this point, do you know more people have been exonerated by DNA than have been executed since the 70s? Well, I mean, DNA is, I mean, well, DNA is what saved you. It is. I, I spent 8,057 days in solitary confinement and I had to actually ask to be executed for the crime I was convicted of in order to get the DNA done. How shameful. When do you think this will end? Do you think it will ever end? It has, it has its cycles. Um, there's a very small population of states, as you know, that have the death penalty. And about, as half, about half the American states. Less yeah. than, and of those, very rarely are they carried out outside of the former slave states. You have to understand that Mississippi, Alabama, and all these had a derogatory nature about them for the slaves and people of uh, lower ilk, they would call them. And it was easy to diminish, uh, diminish them and put them to death. You see, that kind of mentality permeates. And it's so terrible that Louisiana, especially Oklahoma... Oklahoma put someone to death today? Well, last year I was on here talking about the nitrogen gas execution and how horrible it is and how they're trying to facilitate this notion that there's a clean way to kill someone. What would you say, though, to Nick, who, who say... If people do the worst crimes, and if, if they're guilty of them, then they deserve. They deserve to get the most severe punishment because there are plenty of people who think an eye for an eye. I know, but I, I told this to Governor Newsom. I said, sir, I can promise you the wheel is worse than the death penalty. And he knew what I meant. The wheel means life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. And I said, sir, I asked to be executed rather than, fate, than have that fate. And I promise you, the death penalty will never give one person back their loved one. 
please don't let this become something is a bad version of Red Sonia. And what is your one takeaway, Nick, from this 22 years of facing death? Off, off camera, we talked about it. The greatest experience of my life. It gave me poise, charisma, charm. I've written my, new, my latest book, celebrating now my 20th year of freedom. I got out in 2004. I came here to speak before parliament. What a great honor. And from there, I parlayed that into a speaking career for the last 20 years. I'm working on a current film with my friend Alex Rotoli about his cancer. And I have a new project in Los Angeles that I'm working feverishly on. So I've taken all of it as the greatest gift of my life. All of my friends from childhood and both of my brothers are dead because of AIDS, crack, all of the degradation of society. God spared my life so that I could come out here and do good. I honestly believe that. Right, remarkable. Uh, Nick Yarris, thanks so much for, uh, Thank for joining you, us tonight. This is The World with me, Adam Parsons. And after the break, the Taiwan earthquake. The race to reach the survivors continues as hundreds remain trapped after the country's strongest earthquake in 25 years. Welcome back. 
Ten people have died. More than 700 are trapped in Taiwan after the country suffered its strongest earthquake in a quarter of a century. A 7.2 magnitude earthquake struck yesterday, just before 8am local time. Its effects could be felt as far as Shanghai in China, with tsunami warnings issued for southern Japan. Now, there were multiple aftershocks that rocked Taiwan's capital, Taipei. But the worst hit was the eastern city of Hualien, the epicentre of the quake. In Taroko National Park, where at least four people have been killed, dozens remaining missing, efforts are underway to rescue hundreds of people who are trapped, most at a tourist hotel and a youth centre. Our Asia correspondent Cordelia Lynch now reports. It is a surreal sight. Stranded holidaymakers and hotel staff trapped in the aftermath of an earthquake waving down help, caught in what is known as the Tunnel of Nine Turns. It was a twist of fortune that they could eventually make it out, rescued through winding roads and rubble. The worst damage was in Hualien, a mountainous region famed for its spectacular views, but it can be treacherous. Some roads simply fell away, in the area of Silk's Place Taroko Hotel, there are about 600 people trapped, including tourists and hotel staff. The next step is to wait until the road is open. This was an earthquake that caught many off guard. Some immediately moved to protect others, though. Here, nurses grabbing onto babies in hospital as the room shook. Here you can see the full force of the landslides. Cars struck by falling boulders. Rescue operations focused on 100 people trapped in mining areas in a national park. Dozens were caught under the rubble of their homes. I was going inside to buy breakfast when the earthquake started. I didn't know what caused the earthquake. Suddenly, it got much stronger, and I heard the rumbling sound of the ground. My whole body was just thrown out, but the owner of the shop pulled me back in. And there have been more than 200 aftershocks. Taiwan is a fault-ridden place with a long history of earthquakes and a response system many see as a model. It is thanks to lessons learned and robust building that so many survived it. Cordelia Lynch, Sky News. This is The World with me, Adam Parsons. After the break, big questions to answer for Rishi Sunak. Prime Minister has come under increasing pressure to stop sending weapons to Israel, but should the UK halt weapons experts? Exports. Our panel will be back in the studio to discuss that. Well, basically, it's in two parts. Part one is 1999. I wanted to take my detective, Louise Mangan, back to her early days in the Met. 99 was very interesting. That's when the McPherson report came out. You know, the Met were accused of being institutionally racist. Um, and, and there was the, the terrible murder of Jill Dando, which is still unsolved. So that's fictionalised as a kind of peripheral issue. But what happens back then in 1999, then in the second part in 2019, those strands come together. I'm delighted that you enjoyed it. I and it. I'm delighted you read the previous two, because many people know I wrote memoirs, but they're still catching up with the fact that I'm now on to you, So what you give oh, you were former Home Secretary, so you you um get facts and stretch them into fiction? How do you work? No, I don't I think I could have written these books if I hadn't been Home Secretary, but what it did do was give you a better focus on how the police work with the security service, for instance, both of them involved in, in this book, and how the kind of rankings work. Uh, you know, I don't, you don't become an expert overnight when you become Home Secretary on these things, but you do understand elements of it, and some of the characteristics have found their way into the book. Listen, as Home Secretary, as all previous Home Secretaries will tell you, you know things that you can never talk about, things that the security service do and the police to Does keep that make us your hair safe. Turn gray? That that's one of the things <laughs> that made my hair turn grey. Being interviewed by people like UK <laughs> was the other thing that made my hair grow grey. I was always a pussycat. So, with you. Yeah, yeah. So when you know these things, 
You can't... I mean, they're state secrets. You can never tell anyone, no matter how close they are to you. So none of that's gone into the book, I reassure anyone listening from the Cabinet Office. Um, but the characters that you meet and, you know, you understand... I did feel like I was that. there. Hmm? I did feel like did I was... You? Yeah. Did you? Did mm -hmm. you? Well, it's set, of course, on an island in the Thames called Tags Island that exists. So I'm a great believer that and you've written a few yourself, that if you're going to write a novel, there has to be an element. Place is very important. And if the place is somewhere real, mm -hmm. and you're describing real streets and real roads and, you know, real architecture, it kind of helps the fiction to be, to be more um, realistic for the reader. <laughs>
the Palestinian people are driven for their homes, three quarters of a million. The vast majority of the people in Gaza are the descendants of those 750,000 people who are driven from the homes, 15,000 of them slaughtered at the time, 1967, yet another act of ethnic cleansing, an illegal occupation, the longest belligerent okay, occupation. Let's, let's talk about what's well, happening. Here. Well, we haven't got but, time for well, the why, why ask me the Middle Why ask me the question? Then? In terms of arms, uh, Alicia Kearns, the Conservative MP and chair mm -hmm. of the Foreign Affairs Select Committee, in a leaked recording, said that the government had received legal advice that Israel was in defiance of international humanitarian law. What that legally necessitates is Britain ending all arms, arms sales, but also ending all cooperation and sharing intelligence. Now, you're right, Britain doesn't supply that many arms, but if it ends arms sales, that then puts huge pressure on Germany, which has decided to make the Palestinian people pay for the grievous crimes it committed by oh, attempting to exterminate on, the, Jew uh, the Jewish people. Come on, have some decency. Um, and and, Please, and the second and no, the second I won't point, let you... Well, the, yeah, the memory and, and the, of the, the other Holocaust will not be used this okay. way. How dare you? You're it not shouldn't Jewish. Be used. Don't do that. It shouldn't really, be used. Really, don't do it. It this shouldn't be used line, to force the Even Palestinians. Even for you, it's a red line. It shouldn't be used to force the Palestinians. Let's be clear. You are... What are you saying, I think Hen believes that you are... that you are. Disparaging the memory of the Holocaust. Of course, because you just did. No, I didn't. You I said, said Germany is making Palestinians I said Germany's pay, pay yes. for the six yes, million that were killed yes, in the I Holocaust. Did. Yes, I absolutely. This is absolutely disgusting. I can't believe no, you're you, you, I, you. I stand by what I said because it's absolutely true. Um, I was are you saying that wow. Germany is supporting Israel because of what happened? Yes, in the it believes it rather can make, than it, punishing it, it the believes, Palestinians. It believes Germany. Germany has decided it can make up for its obscene guilt by forcing I've somebody else to pay for the crimes that Germany committed. It's a very straightforward wow. point. There's nothing offensive about it. It's a very of, of course point. it's offensive. I'm telling now, you it's now, offensive in terms, and I'm a Jewish in Israeli. Terms of, in terms of, in terms of, in terms of, in terms of, still will not take it back. No, I, I, Because okay. you don't care about I, Jews. Because you, you don't care about You know what's interesting? Okay. I interviewed a German Israeli. Let's, I interviewed a German I interviewed a German Israeli. It's really... And people should check that I interviewed a German Israeli. Well, one person's opinion is not definitive. And I think I do need to... They're shutting down Jewish people in Germany who speak about Gaza. The point about arms, which we were talking about, Israel has destroyed the medical system of Gaza. That itself is a genocidal act. There's no functioning healthcare system. They just destroyed Al Shifa Hospital, the biggest hospital in Gaza. It's been used by Hamas. Now, well, you think, everything's, was... you think everything's used by Hamas, so you, you can point well, everything no, no, to Hamas. No, no, no. <laughs> now, now, we, we can't make glib uh, well, uh, questions well, like that. Okay. There, there are, clearly, there is Hamas you know what, infrastructure it's, it's across Gaza. According disturbing. to every intelligence you know, organization, it, every in the world. single medical facility and hospital in Gaza has been attacked. That imposes a daily death sentence on everyone who has cancer, it's heart problems, really impossible. people who are pregnant, okay. pregnant uh, women I, 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 who I, I, are having... Hen, quickly. No, no, I need well, to let have, sorry, have a response. Sorry, babies who are having their limbs amputated. We, we can see the devastation. Well, and I know you were, you, you're were you upset by some of the things that, 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 that Owen is saying there, but you would accept that the wholesale destruction of Gaza is causing immeasurable pain to the civilian population. It's now. causing Im unimaginable pain for Israelis, for myself, to see that I am angry by every civilian casualty in Gaza. I am heartbroken. It's crazy that, I, that, I, that we have to get to this point. I mean, we don't want that. We didn't have that on October 6th. We pulled out of the Gaza Strip. There was no military control over the Gaza Strip. There were border, like there is with Egypt. By the way, why isn't anyone asking why G Egypt isn't letting in trucks of humanitarian mm -hmm. aid? At the end of the day, let me just say, there is two sorts of approach to this conflict. There's people that look at the past and there's people that look at the future. I'm looking at the future. I want a future for my kids that will be affected by it to live peacefully with Palestinian children. That's all I want. Well, the, well, the Palestinian children need to survive. We, at this moment, this conversation will continue another time. Wow. That's it for tonight. Wow. Thank you both very much indeed. The news at